Once you're ready to do your data analysis, what you're going to have to do is open your Acutoff, JEOL Acutoff data file into a third party software program. And this can be done by going to Start, TSS Pro, this rocket ship right here. And that will open this TSS Pro launchpad. What you're going to do is click on Data Reduction. Some cases that launchpad will remain open just because someone left it open, and that's fine. All you have to do is click on this button right here. But I like to close it out. Okay, so this data file here is the data file of the person who used this last. So to open your data file, what you're going to have to do is translate the JEOL Acutoff file to a TSS 3.0 file. And this is done by going to the file menu, translate Acutoff file, and then navigating to the location to where your data file was saved. So in this case, my data file was saved in April underscore 2016. I'm going to double click on that. And my file is Patrick underscore 040616. You're going to see or notice that these files are also within these folders right here. You can ignore these because the data file to open is in this window right here. So I'm just going to select that and click open. Two windows will pop up. The first window is the open calibration file. And what this is are the mass assignments, the default mass assignments for your data analysis. In this case, I use the positive ionization mode with the Dart ion source, so I'm just going to select that. If you use the negative ion source, or if you use negative ion mode on Dart, then you can click on any of these. But in my case, I'm going to open the positive ion mode calibration. I'm going to click open. This other window will pop up where it'll ask you to put a threshold factor. You can just leave everything at default and click OK. Translation from the Acutoff file to the TSS profile will proceed. So this will take a little bit, a little while. So I'm just going to pause the video here and come back when it's done. Once the translation is done, you're going to be presented with this window again. And you can see up top in this window right here is your total ion profile. And the bottom is your mass spectrum. And this just chooses a random region to where a mass spectrum can be viewed initially. Um, to navigate this software, you can click on the ion profile. So if you click on this ion intensity region right here, a single click will put a single scan of the mass spectrum down here. So I can click on different regions and you can see that the mass spectrum changes with time. Another thing that I could do is left click, drag, and open this window. Once you release this left click, and you can expand, so that means zoom in onto that region. You can drag, left click, drag, and then average, so this averages this mass spectrum of this region. Or you can integrate or display the mass spectrum down here. A display mass spectrum is useless, and integrate will take the average of these ion intensities and give you a value. So if this window has popped up, or if a window here has popped up and you want to remove it, all you have to do is click on this button right here, hide IRC detail. Because I zoomed in by expanding the total ion current, what I'm going to do is come back into focus within this window and then click on the home button. And this resets my view. The first thing that I'm going to do before I do any data analysis is to average the background and use that to subtract the background from my other analyses. So what that means is that if I have this background, you can see that it produces ion intensities. So in the case that I look at this region right here, this will remove those ion intensities from the background from this mass spectrum. So to do that, what I'm going to do is average a blank region 
where I input no analyte. And you can see that there were ion intensities that were acquired. And I don't want that interfering with any of my analysis. So I can go to the menu up here, click on background, and then assign spectrum to background. And so now that the software knows that this is a background spectrum, if I click on this button right here, subtract MS background, this will disappear because this has subtracted itself. To apply this to other regions of where I d actually did an analysis, I can just average a region and then click on this button right here, subtract MS background. And you can see that the mass spectrum has slightly shifted because it removed those background ions. The next thing that I'm going to do before I view any mass spectra for print or for publication is to calibrate it against the polyethylene glycol mass spectrum. So this region right here was where I acquired polyethylene glycol. And if I just click on a region, you can see the single mass spectra over time. And what I'm looking for is focusing on the polyethylene glycol region to where it focuses primarily where my analytes are. So if I'm interested in the 200 to 600 region, I would choose this mass spectrum to calibrate against. If I were focusing on the 300 to 700 region, I would choose this. So what you're going to have to do is average a specific region to where you have the highest ion intensities of where your analytes will be. If you have a broad range of analytes, you can just choose a mass spectrum that covers the full distribution. If I go to my analyte mass spectrum, so over here is where I acquired the dollar bill, acquired the mass spectrum of the dollar bill, most of my analytes focus primarily between the 200 to 700 region, so I'm going to focus on that. So I'm just going to look for that in the polyethylene glycol mass spectrum, and I can see that I get a nice distribution within this region right here. I want to get higher intensities in this lower mass region, so I'm just going to keep fishing. And I can see that this covers a nicer range, except the higher mass region here from 800 to 1100, which I don't really need. Once I find a suitable region to calibrate against, I go up, I do the background subtraction first, and this is always good practice to do. So just make sure to do the background subtraction before you do anything with it. And then go to Calibrate, Create New Calibration Table with this spectrum that I have averaged. This window may pop up where it says the following reference masses were missed, 988. That just means that the M over Z 988 is missing. And I don't need this region anyways, so I can ignore that. In any case, you just have to click no. You don't have to change preferences just because this calibration file takes into account a large mass region. Just click no. And what I'm looking for is a curve fit value that lies between 9 times 10 to the 11, or actually 10 times 10 to the 11, or 2 times 10 to the 10. So this is this curve fit is already very excellent. But if I look at this region down here, and I just zoom in, so do the similar thing to expand this region as up top over here, I can see that 943 is very, very low abundance and may skew the curve fit mass spectrum. So I'm just going to see if I can get a better curve fit by deleting this region right here. If not, then I can put it back. So to delete this, all I have to do is click on this mass, so make sure that there's the arrow, left click, and click on delete, highlighted mass label. And it actually dropped down the curve fit, so I'm going to put that back in by hovering over this mass spectral peak again and clicking, and that would input this as this point right here. So 9e to the 11 is very, very good, and I can accept that 
as my calibration by clicking yes. This window will pop up. Just It asks you if you want to accept the calibration, click yes. And then store the calibration file or store the calibration value into the data file. And you want to click yes because this saves the calibration so you don't have to calibrate again. You can see that I'm zoomed out, zoomed into this mass spectrum region. So I just can zoom out by clicking the home button and I'm back to where I started. So this region right here was where I analyzed a cinnamon altoid, so I'm going to average that. And I can view this mass spectrum that has been calibrated. This M over Z over here is 133.0651, which represents the mass spectral peak for cinnamaldehyde, for protonated cinnamaldehyde, for which the, ex the exact mass, or the expected mass of the ion, is 133.06534 and based off of my calibration I get 133.0651 which is very very good. Since I know that this is a well calibrated mass spectrum and I find this suitable for my records I just want to make this mass spectrum nice for printing or for saving as a PDF. So what I can do is left click and drag into this region so from about 10 to 500 and then click expand. And what's happening is that this mass spectral region here will be saved into the uh, printed file or the PDF. I also have the option to show this tabular data by toggling this button. So hide or show. And if this window is open, this will also print a second page with these values right here. If I don't want them, I can just toggle them and I will only print out one single page with these mass spectral peaks. If I want to label a specific mass spectral peak, I just hover over it and left click and this will label this isotopic peak here. And then I can also drag to move this around. So you can do this to make everything nice and orderly. Once I've labeled all the mass spectral peaks that I've, I'm interested in, to print this either to a PDF or to a physical paper copy, what I will do is click on this button right here, and this will either be a 3.5 disk or a printer button. It doesn't really matter. What you're going to do is right click on it, go to preferences, and you either have the choice to set it to printer, clipboard, or file. In this case, I want to save it as a PDF. But if you click on this region, this window will show up for where you can print it directly as a paper copy. Okay, so I've set this to print as a PDF. The next thing that I'm going to do is make sure that this will print in landscape. There are some cases where the software will print it into portrait mode which will be shown here. So even though this has been selected as landscape, this region right here will be in portrait so you just want to click in and click out just to make sure that you print it in landscape and save you the trouble from having to redo this again. Once these are set, all you have to do is click OK, right click on this again, then click print mass spectrum. Once I do that, I can save it into wherever. In this case, I have a Dropbox folder for myself, and I will label this appropriately as Cinnamon Altoid and the date. So as long as you're consistent with your file naming scheme, nobody cares about how you do it. So once I have a file name, click save. This is where it's going to save right here. And then to show the PDF, I'll click save. So this is what's popping up. And this is the PDF that has been saved into my Dropbox folder.